Hey guys, what is up? This is Phil Bow, and we are looking at the Rapid Fire Thorns Arrow build in Undecember. This build is going to use Rapid Shot, which is basically like an actual machine gun. You will be shooting out a ridiculous amount of arrows every single time you attack. And this ability does overall insane single target damage. Now, it's not the absolute best skill for mapping and for clearing lots of trash, but if we add the chain rune to it, it actually does a decent job. And we'll talk about that when we get into the details. We are going to be activating to Thorn Explosion. Thorn Explosion is also another really high damage ability and should actually do more damage than our Rapid Shot. Thorn Explosion is going to activate where our arrows hit and a few thorns will come up out of the ground, hit the target, and follow up with a massive thorn. So not all the damage occurs at once, but it is worth the wait. The damage is insane. So overall, this build does incredibly high amounts of damage. One of the highest damage builds in the game for physical bow builds and overall a really, really fun build build. One more thing I want to say is that I have plenty of other builds that you can explore. If you're interested in that, I have a link in the description to a build guides playlist. Definitely go check that out and explore all the other builds I have. But let's go ahead and jump right into the details of the build. Okay, guys, so the primary ability is going to be rapid shot. Rapid shot is going to fire multiple arrows, and each one of them will hit our enemy, getting the amount of arrows that we have as high as possible in this build is going to give us much more damage. So we will be looking to increase this number here. It has a very fast projectile speed. It is a physical damage ability, and we are going to keep it that way. We will not be converting to an element in this build. Another thing we need to note is that there is a 15% damage dampening whenever hitting the same target repeatedly. So the first arrow does full damage, and then the following arrows are going to have dampened damage. That being said, we still want to get as many arrows as possible. Moving on to Awakenings, there are two viable Awakenings in my opinion. The Awakening that is going to give you the most damage, if you're looking for the most single target damage, is going to be Origin. And Origin will take that 85% dampening that we have for hitting our target repeatedly and potentially remove 5% of that. So you could potentially get this to 90% dampening instead of 85% dampening. You'll then also get a projectile damage increase here. Now, if you are planning on using this build as your primary build and you want to map and farm with it as well, my suggestion is that you go with the plus one chain count chain is going to allow your arrows to bounce from one enemy to the next enemy whenever you hit them for mapping you will most certainly be using the chain rune here which is going to give you four chains at the legendary level it increases the chain range you can awaken it and get another chain so you'll get five from this rune here and then an additional one here to get six chains so you will potentially be hitting seven mobs at one time. And then you can get up to 2.5% amplification per one remaining chain. This is good if you want to farm. Again, this build is not the best for farming, but it is doable with the chain rune. I definitely recommend if you are going to farm with this that you invest in the chain rune and make this one of the first runes that you bring to Legendary and Awaken. We will then be activating the Thorn Explosion. Thorn Explosion is going to place a, an area of effect on the ground and a few thorns will emerge hitting the target every 0.3 seconds with the small thorns three times and then a large thorn will appear and hit the enemy so the first thorn attack has three thorns every 0.3 seconds and then it finishes up with this second large thorn attack which does really big damage compared to the first thorn attack so that is Thorn Explosion. The Awakening that we are going to go for is going to be Source to get this double damage amplification. This is really, really big damage and by far the highest amount of damage for this build. If you want to use Origin instead, it is going to create three areas. So instead of seeing this one area, three of these areas will appear. However, the second Thorn attack, the one that does really big damage, gets removed. This one does have the potential to overlap. However, it doesn't happen often and is just overall far less damage than source, but it is definitely better for farming. So if you want to do way more farming, Origin would be a recommendation here. However, however, I would go with source if you want the maximum amount of damage. For our movement skills, we're going to be using roll. Roll is a really good movement skill. It has two max use counts by default and has a very low cooldown for a movement skill. And then I also like to use a second movement skill, Trick Shot. Trick Shot is going to have two max use counts at the legendary level. And I like having two just to help get around the field much, much quicker. It is definitely a big boost for farming. 
for our attack enhance, we will be going with Marksman. Marksman is going to give us a big boost to our projectile damage amplification and our hit rate, and it's going to add a pierce count. Now keep in mind, whenever we have this plus one pierce count while Marksman is active, the pierce has to happen before chain can occur. So if you're using the chain rune for your arrows to chain from one enemy to the next, the chain will not happen until this plus one pierce goes through. So this is kind of what happens here. By default, when you attack, your chain's going to start happening immediately. And you can kind of see the arrow bouncing around. Now, when I hit Marksman, it has to travel through the first enemy before it starts chaining around. So keep that in mind. Not a huge deal, but it's something to know. And for our defense enhance, we will be going with Tenacious Regeneration. Tenacious Regeneration acts kind of like a second health potion in that it gives a big boost to your HP. You get an instant recovery to your max HP, and then you get a really nice HP regen per second for the duration. For our attack seal, we will be going with Seal of Critical Chance. Seal of Critical Chance is going to give us a huge increase to our critical rate. This is the best one to use if you're not at crit cap of 100%. If you are at crit cap, the Seal of Condensed Destruction is a really, really good option. And then finally, we will be using Illusion Arrow. Illusion Arrow is a toggle ability, meaning that you can turn it on and turn it off. So if you turn it on, it's always going to happen. The way it works is as you attack and get up to five attacks, these little arrows will come out and hit your enemy. So at the legendary level, you will have eight arrows flying out every five times you attack. So the reason we're going to use Illusion Arrow is because since this is a physical damage build, we will need Illusion Arrow to be converted to lightning damage. By default, it is physical, but we are converting it to lightning in this build to apply the shock debuff to our enemies. The reason we want shock debuff is because shock debuff adds 20% additional damage to enemies affected. So I will show you very quickly how that is done. All we're going to do is simply take our Illusion Arrow and we are going to add the convert lightning damage rune to it. This converts it to lightning. And then we're going to add the continuous shock rune to it, which adds shock rate. So shock rate, if we read it, this right here is going to give us a chance to inflict shock to the enemy. And again, it increases damage taken by enemies by 20%. So this is kind of what we're going to see happen. So as we're attacking, we're going to turn on our illusion arrow. Again, this is just always on. And you'll see these little arrows just kind of pop up and fly out as we are attacking. And you can see up here, the shock debuff is appearing on the enemy. So it's doing its job. This is primarily there for when you're taking down bosses very quickly. Moving on to the runes. For rapid shot, we are going to use multi shot. The reason we want to use multi shot is because we get these additional projectile counts. And at the legendary level, we're going to have four projectiles increased. And this is going to be added to the number of arrows we have in rapid shot. So this increases the number of arrows and is probably the best rune for rapid shot. So you definitely want to have that. We are also going to be using chain. So we talked about chain earlier. Chain is going to allow our arrows as they hit enemies to bounce to the next so many enemies. This is going to allow us to go through enemies a lot easier while we're farming. I do not recommend farming with this build if you don't have chain. I think you could probably use something like spread shot, but if you do have chain, I think rapid shot is fine for clearing. We're also going to be adding additional physical damage. This is a solid rune that could potentially be replace later on with something like mana storm if you have the mana to support this we will be converting mana in this build and we'll talk about that a little bit later so mana is not going to be too difficult to obtain in this build but this is going to give us a big flat physical damage increase and physical damage amplification then i also recommend quick attack quick attack gives us a really nice boost to our attack speed for the final link amplify physical projectile damage is really nice you get physical damage amplification and flat physical damage and some other runes i can recommend are find weakness find weakness if you're not at crit cap then this is a really really strong rune early on slaughter is a solid option if you have Plenty of crit rate, but not a whole lot of crit damage, but starts to fall off once your crit damage starts increasing. If you're not using chain, I think piercing is also a really, really strong option here. This can get potentially very, very high damage amplification with pierces. Plus three here if you awaken it, additional plus one. So that can bring this up to 22% amplification plus the 5% here. And you get all of this projectile damage on top of that. So... If you're looking for single target and you want to switch something out for chain, 
this is not a bad option. If you have reached or surpassed attack speed cap, you can drop quick attack and put something like confidence on, which adds less attack speed, but it also adds a lot of damage on top of it. So you take a slight hit in attack speed, but you gain all this damage and compensation, provided that you have at least 80% or more HP. And then finally, Mana Storm, really, really strong, but will increase your cost significantly. We will then be using Spell Activation on Attack Hit to activate Thorn Explosion. Thorn Explosion, we will also be using Amplify Physical Projectile Damage to get this Physical Damage Amp and Flat Physical Damage added. Mana Storm is also going to be used. It has very strong Strike Damage Amplification, which is a big boost to our Thorn Explosion. Do note that it is going to add a lot of mana cost, but this skill has a very, very low mana cost in general, so it's not that big of a deal and very easy to maintain, in my opinion. Next rune, I would say area of effect is going to make the area of Thorn Explosion much, much larger. One of the downsides of Thorn Explosion is that it is quite small by default. Adding this area of effect is going to help you out when you're mapping, even with bosses or single targets that move, because if they move out of your Thorn Explosion, it doesn't do any damage. So a larger Thorn of Explosion will help hit those enemies more often. If you want the absolute most damage, then just take the area of effect off and add concentrated area damage, which does the opposite. It increases damage by a very, very large amount, but it does dampen the area of effect. So it's going to make it a lot smaller. So the explosion range is 143 and 191 right now with concentrated area and then area of effect. 229 to 306, so much, much larger. Moving on, Strike is going to be our next rune that we use. We get a big damage amplification here, some Strike damage, and attack speed dampening is on the rune. However, it does not matter because this is our activated skill. So the attack speed dampening has no effect for us and is why Strike is such a strong rune for activated skills. Finally, we are going to be using lower armor. Lower armor is going to drop the armor on the enemy that gets hit, can stack up to six times at the legendary level, and then once awakened, you can get four more lower armor stacks. I like this one the most, this plus four. It does reduce the lower armor effect a little bit here. The extra stacks make up for it, and the reason we want those extra stacks is because you get physical damage taken amplification per stack. So this is going to increase the damage of our thorn explosion by a good amount, while still at the same time lowering armor. This lowering of the armor is going to help out both your Rapid Shot and Thorn Explosion, so it makes for a good rune to invest in early on. So as far as Zodiac stats go, you're just going to need enough Dexterity to run Rapid Shot. You're going to want enough Strength to run your Thorn Explosion. So because we have high Dexterity and Strength, going with Armor and Dodge Gear is a really good option. I think you want to focus on Armor until you get up close to the Armor cap early on and then you can start working in dodge gear from there. And for intelligence, you don't have to put anything in here. However, once you've gotten to a point with your character where you've reached max level, stats aren't as much of an issue, you'll want to get this to 200 because you're going to want to go into Maggot and get this 40% damage node here if your strength, dex, and int are 200 or more. You're also going to be able to pick up this 30% projectile damage as both of our skills use the projectile tag. I also like to pick this 30% area damage, even though it only affects Thorn Explosion because Thorn Explosion does so much damage that I think that this is worth the one point of investment. If you can't get the 200 points of intelligence, don't worry and just take these five points out and put them elsewhere. Now I'm going to walk you through the Zodiac traits that I'm using. You do not have to copy this exactly. I'm mostly just showing it so that you have an idea of what you might want to do. For Zodiac trait one, we're going to be taking these first five points here. Since this is an attack-based build, we will be picking up damage upon attack and attack speed. For tree two, I'm picking up these six points here. Again, I think you should invest in armor early until you hit armor cap. So I'm grabbing this one here and getting armor. Once you get to a point where armor's done an issue and you have more than you need, you can drop points into the dodge tree instead. In tree three, I'm picking up all these points here. I need more HP, so I'm picking up this additional Zodiac trait. If you don't need it, you can take it out and put it elsewhere. In tree four, I'm taking these five points here. Again, armor, and take the resistance you need the most. In tree five, I'm taking all of these points. The reason I like to pick up the two HP and the one mana on every hit, because this build, every time you attack, you're hitting the enemy so many times. Your rapid shot is going to have over 10 projectiles. Your thorn explosion hits four times, so three times in the first attack, and then a fourth time on that large second attack. And then your illusion arrow is going to send a bunch of projectiles as well. So these are going to be really, really beneficial nodes for us and help give us a lot of additional health and mana sustain. 
In tree six, I am taking all these points here to get this attack speed and this attack critical damage. Tree seven, I'm taking all these five points here. This is provided you have the 200 intelligence. And then in scent, I'm taking all these points here. I am going four points deep to get this 20% area of effect to make my thorn explosion a little bit larger for the area. However, if you don't want that, you can take these four out and put them elsewhere. In tree eight, I'm taking all these points here. And I'm also going into farmer to get these five points to get additional health points. And then in Hunter, I'm taking these five points to get time of the hunt. And with some of the extra points I have, I'm dropping them into Detect Prey just to get my crit rate up a little bit further. And then to get this chance for movement speed on hit and then just a little bit more health. So these are kind of some optional points here and you can play with them how you want. For our specialization, we will be going into Dawn and we will be going down here to grab this Convert Mana. Convert Mana is going to help us sustain our mana. Even though it's taking some of our life, we do have some sustain in this build. Earlier, we talked about the HP on every hit. We're getting a lot of it, health points back every time we attack. So that's going to help us sustain this convert mana. And then also in the third tree of our specialization, we're going to pick up this right here, this HP absorb on hit. So there's going to be some life leech here that we get. But I would recommend that you do look for some HP absorb on your weapon or in the lacrima if you can get it. We'll also be going down and grabbing these two points to get this attack speed amplification and resource cost dampening. I like to spend the rest of my points here and get uplift, which is a boost to attack speed and damage upon attack, and then strike damage amplification here. For the second specialization, we're going to take these points here, grab Tempest. This will give us attack speed and movement speed increase as we are moving. And then if we stand still, it is going to dampen damage that we take by 10%. So keep that in mind. If you go idle for one second, you'll lose this attack speed and get damage dampening of 10% and this 100% damage increase there. We'll also grab the strike damage amplification, sharpness to get a crit rate, crit damage boost, and then this attack crit rate and crit damage node. For our third specialization, we'll go into sympathy and we are going to go up and grab this 12% strike damage amplification, the HP absorb that we talked about to help offset convert mana, the life that was taken from convert mana. And then we're going to grab capable here. This gives us attack crit rate and attack crit damage per the amount of strength, dexterity, and intelligence that we have. And we are also going to grab Acrobat for this plus two projectile count here. And since we are a critical hit based build, don't worry about this other information. Basically what happens is if you have five normal hits in a row, you'll gain this Jester buff, which gives an additional two projectile count on top of the two we're already getting, but it disables your critical hit. We're never going to get to those stacks of five since we're always critting. You should be at a very, very high crit chance. You should never really ever get this Jester buff. So don't worry about that too much. As far as gear stats, you should be looking for the bow base. You want speed and critical rate. Charm stats, charm blessings, and avatar information, that's all going to be down in the video description below so that you can reference. But that is the entire build. That is the rapid fire Thorns arrow build. What do you guys think? Do y'all like this? How can we improve it? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've got any questions about the build or if I've missed something, drop that down there as well. But if the video has been helpful, do me a solid and give me a like and a subscribe it helps me out a lot, but I've got to get back to the grind, so I'll catch you guys later.